Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Valerie, and I am 56 years old. I live in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I've been living here all my life. Uh, I've traveled quite a few places. Um, I have two sons, and I am a grandmother as well. Yeah, you know, all this. Um, and I try to instill in family values because I believe still in good family family values as well. Um, I was I grew up as a small kid from uh, one to ten down in the Vine Housing Projects, and uh, I can still remember times of my mother, who I would always love and adore, uh, just instilled some of those values in me. Uh, such things as uh, sometimes the radiator, the heat wasn't working in the projects. My mother knew alternative ways for us to stay warm. Open up the stove door, uh, put pots on the stove, let the steam steam out. So I was like a seven-year-old kid, really learning, really start learning my way about how to uh, really how to stay warm, you know, um, just different values of, of how to survive is the word, the better word. Uh, when the actually in the grade school that I went to, which was Jefferson School, not only did I go there, I went there, my mother went there, all of her siblings went there. So that was just crazy. I was, uh, we were raised, me and my sister, it's three of us. Yeah, me and my sister was raised on the porch with like about five dudes. And it was two in one household, three in another. And when I tell you they used to rough us up, <laughs> they used to rough, up, rough us up. And then, then there were things as us being girls that we was not allowed to do, such as do cartwheels. We could not do cartwheels if the guys were doing cartwheels and flipping. We could not do that. That our neighbor next door, Miss Marie, she, bless her, you know, she's no longer here with us. But she had instilled in us. Now, can you can you imagine a seven, eight-year-old kid? I knew how to clean a house. Still know how to clean a house. Because we had this 65-year-old lady that stayed next door. My mother worked. My mother has always worked. And she would look after us. So we learned how to clean and mop and dust as kids. And I think that's something that's completely missing with uh, all of our kids. But every chance I get, I try to, uh, not to veer away from what I was saying, but uh, I try to instill in my grandkids. I have, uh, I have three grandsons and one granddaughter, a set of twins, uh, the girl and boy. And then I have, the, uh, I have a 17-year-old grandson. I have a 12-year-old niece, a 12-year-old girl boy twin. And then I have the 8-year-old. That's, uh, so those are my, my grandbabies. And I try to instill those values that I learned as a seven, eight year old coming up. So when you calling me asking grandma, because now the kids call and just ask, can you cash out you some money? So I say, you know what? I'm going to cash out you some money, but you owe me some household chores. So as of now, my Chris, Christmas kind of left the basement tore up. So since I, I already put money out. He got to come do some work. And we have an understanding with that. So we just need to just tell our kids and show our kids that they need to learn values, different values, you know. Uh, so my grandson, the 12-year-old grandson, he came and he decorated Christmas. I made him help me take the things outside. We decorated the outside. I showed him how to do it. But, and he's 12. So that means when Christmas comes this year and I call him and say, it's time to set up the Christmas outside, and then he'll be 13. He'll know how to come right to Granny House and go and do that. But Miss Marie was a type of lady. She was an older lady back to my youth at seven, eight years old on the porch, as I can remember. She would, if we would flip with our legs, because you do a cartwheel, you know you had to have your legs open as a V. That was a no, 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 no. So she did not play that we had our legs open any type of way as two girls on the porch with five boys. So um, I've always had this, as they call me a little pritzy or uh, very girly girly because I was in, that was instilled in me. So that carried on, you know, all the way until 
I got grown, had kids. So, but then when I was uh, 11, mother decided she was going to leave the projects and get the lights and gas. Because everybody knows when you live in the projects, you just pay a rent and that's it. But she decided she wanted to go and get the light, the gas, and get the pay the you know the house payment as well, which is the rent for our apartment that we lived on Bratner. Uh, we lived over there. I lived there for for at least eight years, um, and in between that time, I had a pretty good kid growing up as a teenager. But remember, I still had those same values when I was seven and eight years old that I still had to carry because I, for one, I'm the oldest. I was the oldest, and I had my sister, and that was my little brother, which we are seven years apart. So, you know, my mother always, once again, she always worked. So as we got older, she needed more income. So she got the extra income from the side job. You know, so she would go do her eight-hour job, and then she'd come home, check check in on us, and then she'd go to her, her second job, and she'd work five to ten. So that went on. As long as I can remember, to be honest. So, guess who had to run the house? Me. And the first time I I took what mama tell me to do and how to make sure the chores are done, our homework is done. There was always a pot, always boiling or cooking or spaghetti or chili. There was something made for us. Uh, so, when I got my new assignment, not as just being the oldest, but as running the house, uh, my sister and brother, one particular time, didn't do their homework. They didn't do. They didn't clean up. But now I did my stuff. But they didn't do their stuff. And we all went to bed because we know we had school the next day. Mama comes in, so she gets off at ten. You know, so she's not getting home to ten thirty at least. You know, she gets in there. Of course, she's tired. She worked two damn jobs. What are we talking about here? But that's what mothers did though back in those times. You know, they they had those values instilled in them that, you know, if the daddy left the house, the husband left, or what have, have you happened, we still have to keep going. We can't stop, you know. So I understood my assignment that I needed to run the house and help mother with the house. They didn't do their chores. Why I got my butt whooped? Let's just make it clear. My mama beat my ass. She said, I'm whooping you because I left you here in control to run this house to make sure that your, your little sister, your little brother, they ate, they did their homework, and they did they their chores. And if you can't make sure that they do it, then you're going to get your ass whooped every time they don't do their work. So you all know I was for real the warden then. So... <laughs> How was it um, in school, junior high school, high school? Well, see, when I first went to to middle to our grade school, it was first for kindergarten to eighth grade. Can you imagine? I was in a school from kindergarten to eighth grade. Well, when by the time of uh, in 1980, they decided to make that from kindergarten to sixth grade. So all of us that were going to the eighth grade had to go to a middle school. And the middle school was, was converted with a whole lot of other different people. Uh, other schools, not just our school. I think there was Jefferson, Columbia. There was other schools, but they combined all of those schools into one school. And we all had to go to this school for one year. Middle school was okay. It, it, you know, it's, there was a hell of a dap, you know. We looked for our eighth grade to do the eighth grade graduation, eighth grade trip. I don't think we did that um, at at the school, at the middle school. I'm I'm not. I can't be certain of that. But high school, I started off with. Okay, I am the type of kid. I did what my mother tell me to do. But I always like to have fun, even as a young kid. And I, of course, most girls can get sassy or rebellious. And I did that, especially um, when it was time for me to go. And we were always, let me backtrack. We, we were also, my mother, not only did she work, she made sure we went to church every Sunday. 
We went to church every Sunday. We had Sunday school and we had church. And because we could walk around, walk right around the corner to the church. What church did you go we to? We went to Transfiguration Lutheran Church. As a kid, I was, uh, I was, as they call it, baptismal, but you know. Um, so I was good. I had confirmation classes there. So I'm quite well with, with the Lutheran values. I know Lutheran history. I know about Lutheran, period. That was instilled in me. And I still know that even though as older, I converted over to Baptist, but I still have that pedigree of Lutherans. So, you know, I had a pretty good kid come, you know, pretty good home as even, even in the projects, we had a pretty good Coming up, I can never remember us ever being hungry. We can even with us me saying that Mama had to let the stove down, cut the hot water on in inside of the tub, steaming up in the bathroom. We had ways of always being warm or survival mode. I so I never if if, if it was something going on, we as kids didn't know about it. Well, as of to the two thousand, the kids know about it. And that's another issue we can discuss at another time. Um, what about your father? My daddy lived, my mother said my daddy lived in California. And he lived there until I turned 22. I knew my daddy would come in town and he would stay maybe a week or so. And I would see him and visit with him. But I didn't really get to know my daddy until I was 22. When he came back to St. Louis. So now, but my daddy had, mm, let me say, my mother, if I act up and was sassy, my mother would say to me, I'm going to call it Skibo. And when I tell you all, just to hear her say she going to call my daddy, who was in Los Angeles, El Los Angeles, California, many, many miles, for her to tell me she going to call him on me, was like, oh my God, that made me straighten up my shirt and straighten up, sit my, get my act together, basically, is what I had to do. And I'm like, how could this man have this type of effect on me and he hasn't really been active in my life? That's another st subject to talk about as well. But, uh, so when I would get sassy, she would mention she gonna tell my daddy on me and of course I'd get some act right. And do what I'm told to do. So by us being in the in, in the church, I've been one of the good girls. I was always in the plays. I even played Mary. Can you believe that? <laughs> For the Christmas play one year. So the church seemed fit that I would go to a Lutheran school. So my first year of high school, which I only did one semester at Lutheran North High School, because of course you remember I was a sassy kid, and I when you tell my cuss. I will cuss your, I cuss your ass out for real. So I didn't like the school. So the mama just paid tuition. I didn't like the school. They wanted me to apologize for cursing. I apologize for the words that I said. Well, the teacher claimed that I'd said extra words. I'm like to this very day and I'm 56. I didn't say what she said I said, but I said what I said. And I did curse. And I apologize, but I wasn't going to say, um, and, and to this very day, I still have those saying, if I didn't do it, I didn't do it. Plain and simple. So my mama was like, if you're not going to tell the truth, valued you cussing. I say, mama, I cursed and I apologize for what I cursed for, but I'm not going to apologize for nothing extra. And that's how I've been throughout. So of course, I had to leave Lutheran, Lutheran North High School, which is on Lucas and Hunt in 1980. Now my mother huffing and puffing because she was a Vishon veteran. She went to Vishon herself. And she did not, trust me, want her child to go to Vishon. I, 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 I guess not, at least me. I, anyhow, uh, we get to Vishon. They finds out that I had already signed up to go to one of the um, magnet high schools here. And they had... They had put, I, they pulled my name out the lottery. So I was a, available to go to the school, which was business, professional, and finance. So when they found that out, they, I didn't have to go to Vishon. We moved from Vishon straight to business, business, finance, business, management, and finance. 
And I did my whole entire four years there. And even though the name of the school changed over, uh, there was quite a bit going on. I remember us being on, on, on Bratner Place where we I was raised up at. That was a crucial part, you know. From 10 to 18 is a very crucial part for kids. And you remember a whole lot, you more than you think you really do. And we would, the summer times would be just, look, we would be the girls against the boys, and we all had bats and gloves and balls. We would go up because where we lived at on the, the street we lived on, up the hill was Dunbar School. But Dunbar School also had, they, you know, back then they made sure that they had the, the, uh, the playground painted. And so we would go up there, 12 o'clock, we were girls against the boys, we played baseball. I mean, this was something that we did as kids. I mean, because we didn't have, some of us might have had Nintendo, but I, we wasn't being on the electronics. So we were more social with each other. Yeah, so I, I had a lot of fun. And, but as far as me being a hustler, that's another story as well. Even, even when I was at home with mama, I would sell candy apples because I always had a ways to make me some money, you know, because uh, I'm watching my mother work. So I'm like, okay, there are some times that I need to buy my own sanitary napkins, okay? Just let's, let's, let's be cool. I want my own pretty bug spray perfume. I, I might like these boots that she won't buy me, but if I have at least 20 or $30, she imagined I can get what I want. So I learned earlier to the survival mode, you know. Cut. Thank you for sharing with us. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you at a later time. Thank you, Ms. Val. Bye-bye.